Welcome back everyone. Uh, today I'm just going to do a little quick few minute uh, quick tips video. I have a 2012 Toyota RAV4 and it has a P2197 with the air fuel sensor stuck lean. Um, I already went ahead and diagnosed this but while, while go going over this with my apprentice I, I showed him a, a trick on how to simulate a sensor just to make sure the ECM is working. So I have my data pulled up you can see when I give this gas, you can see that uh, bank one sensor one reacts. You can see bank two sensor one does not. It is stuck um, right at zero milliamps. Uh, these sensors, they actually work off of amperage, but it has a 3.3 volt wire and a 2.9 volt wire. Um, and it uses uh, the differential and voltage to calculate the amperage flow. It's actually how air fuel sensors work. And maybe we'll go into that a little farther in another video, but this is how I, I actually check these when they're stuck. Okay, so there's my air fuel sensor and I have my wires pierced in the harness and I'm only piercing them in this instance because I'm gonna be replacing this sensor. Uh, so I have my two signal wires uh, pierced on the sensor side I have my multimeter going in the ground and I'm checking my voltage at both of these wires. I'm gonna try to do this one handed for you all. You can see I have 3.3 volts on one wire and I'm gonna have 2.9 on the other. There you go. Now, the key to this video is how to simulate an air fuel sensor and watch the reaction on the scan tool. So I have an LED test light hooked up to my battery ground. When I touch power, lights up. Now, listen carefully. This here is an LED test light. It only has about 13 milliamps of current running through it. Um, so it's computer safe. I'm going to touch the wire, it had 3.3 volts on it, and you can watch the display on my data change. Bullshit. All right, so as I was editing this video, I realized that it didn't fit my standards, whatever my standards are. I didn't like the video. I didn't like that I didn't explain how an air fuel sensor circuit works and what I was doing to manipulate it to see a change by the ECM. So I made a couple slides and we're going to go through these slides on how this circuit actually works. What you'll see here is I have this ECM and within this ECM you have this current flow detection device and that is built into what I'm going to call our signal circuit. Now our signal circuit is the wire that provides 3.3 volts going into our air fuel sensor. And our ground, or what I'm calling our ground, is gonna provide 2.9 volts going in to our air fuel sensor. Now, the job of the air fuel sensor is to essentially read the, the gases within the exhaust and provide an electromotive force to resist, I guess you can say resist, the voltage or the amperage flow of the signal circuit. And we'll get into that a little farther in a couple couple other slides here. But when you're looking at this, you, you got to essentially look at these as two halves of a circuit trying to overcome each other. You have uh, 2.9 volts trying to go up. And you also have 3.3 volts trying to go up. But the 2.9 volts combines with our air fuel sensor. And how this circuit actually works is based on the amount of voltage created by our air fuel sensor, you'll have a change in amperage flow. So on this next slide, this here is a perfectly running engine, running perfectly at stoichiometric. So our air fuel sensor at stoichiometric uh, provides 0.4 volts. And you're gonna combine that with the 2.9 volts on our uh, ground wire. That's gonna create 3.3 volts on this half of the circuit. So the 3.3 volts on the left side of the circuit <clears throat> and the 3.3 volts on the right side of the circuit are equal. 
so there's no voltage differential when there's no voltage differential there's no pressure or well the pressures are opposing each other and there's no amperage flow so a perfectly running engine you're going to have 0.0, .0 milliamps of current flow that is what you'll read on your data pid now not every make and model is the same about if it's going to be a positive or negative milliamp reading depending on its, if it's rich or lean i'm fairly certain that honda is the opposite is of toyota's but the one thing you can always look at is the lambda so it's stoichiometric our lambda is going to be 1.0 it's perfect stoichiometric now this here is going to be a lean running engine maybe a vacuum line is left off and our air fuel sensor is going to create 0.2 volts of voltage. Now, that is going to combine with the 2.9 volts from our ground wire. That is going to provide 3.1 volts on our left half of this circuit. You're still going to have 3.3 on the right half. Now, the 3.3 is obviously higher than 3.1. There's going to be a pressure differential or a voltage differential, and current is going to flow out of our ECM through our current flow detection. And what you're gonna then have is a positive milliamp reading. So it's gonna be above 0 0.0. It's also going to create a lambda reading of above one. So you're gonna have maybe like a 1.1 lambda reading. How I remember lambda is uh, I'm adding fuel because I have a lean mixture. So anything above one, I'm adding fuel because it's lean. And how I remember my milliamp rating on Toyotas is very much like fuel trims. Positive fuel trims are lean, negative fuel, fuel trims are rich. So that is how I, I actually remember these, these readings and these data pids on, on Toyotas. And if I'm not working on Toyotas, I usually just look at the Lambda reading. So that is our lean, lean mixture. This next one here, this here is our rich mixture. Now, we have a rich exhaust. Our air fuel sensor is providing a higher voltage. We're going to com combine that with our 2.9 volts from our ground wire. That's going to create 3.4 volts on the left side of this circuit. Now, you're still going to have 3.3 on the right side. Now, the amperage is now going to flow out of the ground, essentially, what I'm calling a ground, and into our... A signal circuit is so that is going to create a negative milliamp reading so it's going to be a negative 0.1 milliamps maybe or negative 0.01 something like that now, as far as our lambda goes you're going to provide it's going to provide a lambda reading of below one so maybe like 0.95 is going to be our lambda for this so that is now our rich mixture all of that leads up to what I did with a test light. So our test light has about 13 milliamps of current draw on it. So anytime I touch it to the battery, I have about 13 milliamps running through this test light. And I, and I wanna make sure you're aware that I used an LED test light, not an incandescent test light. I'm not sure if an incandescent test light would hurt this. I, I actually don't think it will at all, but there's a higher potential. So use an LED test light, extremely low current draw when doing a test like this. I hooked my LED test light up to battery ground and touched my signal wire on the wire that has 3.3 volts. That allowed current to flow out of this ECM. When the current flow flowed out of this ECM through our LED, the ECM determined that that was a positive milliamp reading. And if you actually go back and watch this video again, you'll actually be able to see that our milliamp uh, went up and our fuel trims went up. So I just wanted to go over what I was actually doing in this video because I know I was rushing, didn't do a very good job explaining it. But I also want to know if you all like these style videos where they're real quick, um, maybe on a vehicle, during a day that's busy, some cell phone footage, you know, real quick and dirty videos, maybe a little something more polished afterwards, uh, something like I'm trying to do with this. Uh, let me know if you like these videos because maybe I can fill these videos in between longer length videos like full diags, 20 minute 
you know, a 20 minute video on a single car diagnosing it, maybe a little more in depth while I'm diagnosing it compared to what I'm doing here where I was, you know, I spent just a few minutes on the video. So let me know if you like this style video and I'm going to continue to do full length diag videos. Just we're still busy at work and uh, I, I can't take time away from from my, my job to film videos right now. So until we slow down a little bit and I can start start doing more for full length videos, let me know if you all like these and uh, leave a comment below. And uh, I do I do have some nice tools coming that I'm hoping to film. So stay tuned and check out all those videos and I'll catch you all next time.